body, speech, and mind held in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Bye. Good morning, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends. Today is the Sunday, December 18th, 2016. We are having our weekly uh, Sunday morning service. How are you? I hope you are um, well and enjoy the weather so far. Lately, well, today is quite uh, warmer than the other days. According to um, Mahayana Buddhist tradition. Uh, today we uh, celebrate and commemorate the day of uh, Amita Buddha. Uh, Amita Buddha is the very uh, famous Buddha in uh, Mahayana tradition. You know that Buddhism has two, two traditions. One we call Theravada, that means a very orthodox Buddhism. And one is called Engaged Buddhism, which we call Mahayana. And uh, there is the Buddha that we use to um, recite every day. Uh, every time when we meet each other, we use to join our palm and say, Ayida Phật, Amita. According to the uh, Mahayana text, Amita Buddha is not up here or, or not, what, not born on our planet, on our world. We only know him by the introducing of uh, Shakyamuni, our Buddha. And this uh, Shakyamuni Buddha said that if we want to go back to our calmness, we should uh, recite his name regularly, Amita Buddha's name regularly. You know that uh, in our daily life, we have so many things to distract us. Maybe you're sitting here, but your mind already wanders to many other places. Sometimes we are looking for tomorrow, but when tomorrow arrives, we still live for another tomorrow. We very rarely that we really drowning ourselves or invest ourselves 100% in the present moment. So therefore, the Buddha gave us many ways to practice as long as that technique, that instruction able to help us to go back to the present moment. Why present moment so important? Because the past already passed. The future is not yet come. The life is right in the present moment. So if we do not know how to enjoy the present moment, what, what else can we enjoy? Things already passed, we cannot bring it back. Things not yet come, we cannot bring it sooner. We only have what is called now. But if we do not enjoy or touching what is called now, then we cannot touch any other moment. So that's why many Zen masters, they said, the paradise of Buddha, the kingdom of God is here or never. We used to say, I'm looking for one day I die, I go to Pure Land. 
Vietnamese they call Tinh Độ. Tinh Độ English translation Pure Land. Pure mean Tinh, clean, calm. Độ mean the place, the area, the world. But what? Where is that world? Where is that place? We cannot touch where it's called calm, pure, happy. If inside of us we are not pure, calm, and happy yet. So once your mind is happy, no matter where you are, you're happy. If once you're not happy, no matter what kind of party you attend, you're still not happy. So the environment, the outside, depends on your inside. Your family is happy or not depends on how you live. Not depends on how Buddha bless you. The Buddha bless means the Buddha offer us the instruction how to make our family happy. But every single member of that family, they have to make an effort. They make an effort. They try to make the family happy. Let's say we, we may complain, Mom, Dad, why you argue so much? Maybe as children, maybe sometimes you invest that. Maybe you don't clean your house, you don't clean your room, you don't do your homework, you don't eat on time, you play game too much. You may make your, your parents get mad. And once they get mad, that means the inside of them, they get angry. Now their land is no more pure and calm and happy. What is that kind of experience? Hell. So in Buddhist definition, heaven or hell is not away, not too far from us. It's right in us. It's only the experience of living. So when you're happy, that is the experience of heaven. When you live totally suffering, that is the experience of hell. When you, when you have no love, when you have no understanding, when you have so much jealousy, you live very selfish. That is the rhyme of hunger. We are very much hunger. Hunger for love, hunger for understanding, hunger for giving. So in Buddhist practice, when we say, oh, go to the Buddha land, go to heaven, go to hell, it's not, not hell is not underground. Heaven is not up there. Heaven or hell is right in us. They all start from the word H. Happy, hell, heaven. How you make that become a positive H, not a negative H. Sometimes you sit with your, your, you stay home with your parents. You don't have to do anything as long as you see your parents happy, your mom is cooking, your dad is helping, you cleaning your room. It's a happy family. Nobody get mad with each other. You're able to sit and enjoy meal with your parents. So pure land in Buddhism means once ever, your mind is calm, relaxed, happy. You have no more suffering. The moment you, the, you absence, the moment that you have that, the, your suffering is absent, then that is the moment of heaven. So the moment you live with unhappy, with suffering, with, with uh, uh, anger, that is the moment of hell. So every day we may reconnect from heaven to hell all day long. So when people will say, oh, reconnection, we don't need to be dying in order to reconnect. We can reborn in pure land. We can reborn in hell. We can reborn in hunger. So the Buddha gave us many different kind of medications. Depends on what kind of sickness we are. 
So because we so much wandering, that's why the Buddha gave us the name of the Buddha for us to recite. So when you focus on the name, you think about the Buddha, you're, you speak, you speak up the name of the Buddha. You meditate on the Buddha. Your mind is less wandering. You're able to bring yourself to the present moment. The, the moments of calmness, the moment of relax. Meditation or reciting the Buddha name. Same, same purpose. For people who meditate, what do they focus to? They focus to the breath. They sit down quietly, they follow, they, they, they follow the breaths. When they breathe in, they realize, I am breathing in. When they're breathing out, they realize, I am breathing out. So when they totally aware, they are breathing in, they are breathing out, they do not wander their mind anywhere else, anything else. They try to bring their mind to focus one thing at a time. So we are unable to follow the breath. So now we follow the Buddha's name. Say the Buddha's name like we just practiced a few minutes ago. You recite the name and the sound of the name of the Buddha try to calm you. So when you visit the patients who they are very sick. You can recite the Buddha's name slowly, calmly, to comfort them. Yesterday I was in Calgary to visit a very ill lady. She's very old, 90 years old. She almost come to the last minute. So the family call us and invite us to come to support her. Look like she totally not aware, but when I came in, I call her, she aware. I said, if you hear me, signal your eyes, so we know that you still aware. So she tried to open her eyes. She tried to move her eyebrow in order to let us know that she aware. And we do the, the, the name of the Buddha in order to calm her, to comfort her. So re reciting the name of the Buddha is one of the way to help people to calm down. Let's say when you're so scary, a nightmare, or you stay home alone, and you're so scared, your mom will say, say the name of the Buddha. Why? Because when you're so quiet, you're thinking about the ghost. But now I said, oh, don't worry, thinking about the Buddha. So your mind turn around, think about the Buddha, you forgot the ghost. So ghost is nowhere, just because we have a, a perception, a perception, a ghost around here. The more you run, the more you feel that the ghost almost caught you. So now you turn around. So what is the practice here? Just turning around. When you do something wrong, turn around to focus to the right. When you realize you turn on the wrong way, then what happened? Don't just say, oh, I'm, in the, I'm on in the wrong way, but keep going. If you, if you realize that you're on the wrong way, turn around and you exit. You're out of that wrong way. Very simple. Buddhism offers us the insight, the wisdom to reflect, to see if you already realize you are wrong. Don't just say, yes, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong, but keep going. <laughs> Saying it is not, is not enough. You need to do something to declare or to inform what do you do when you know you are wrong. Exactly when you do math, maybe you, do on, you are doing your math, and then your friend or your teacher pass around, and then they say, they look at your, your problem, they say, it's wrong. 
They told you it's wrong. Then don't just keep going. You must go back to the very beginning and redo it to find where you have done wrong. Sometimes, if you, um, if you are shopping, you see, on a big, big parking lot, they have the enter area, they have the exit area, always. If you turn to the wrong exit, it's okay. There is way to be out. Nothing is the end. So try to reflect, meditate, and transform. That is how we practice Buddhism. We come to Buddhism not just because we have a belief, a faith, but more than anything else, we come for the instruction, the way to live. We need, we all live, but we need instruction how to live. Not only for us to be happy, but we're able to make people around us happy. At least people right in our family, our loved one happy. And why we need to do that? So we don't waste. We don't waste our entire life. People will say, I don't care, I just live for myself. I don't care anyone thinking about me, what they think about me. It's okay for you to say that or to live by that way, but no meaning. And you see that many people in this world, in this life, they try to bring air, all the insight to offer for life. Once ever they research something, they declare the world. So people can learn from that. If they can make a software, they don't keep it for themselves. They offer the world. So remember, every one of us here, we're able to create something very positive. Even just a single word to make people happy. Why not? Life sometimes very simple. Bring a cup of water for that person. Say hello to that person. Ask them a question, how are you? You go to shopping or somewhere, you are ahead of one person, you open the door, that person get in, they say thank you. What else they do? So they come in first before you. Now they are turned to open the door for you. You come in, you both help each other for one door each and you receive a word, thank you. Life is that symbol. Heaven is right there. Pure land is right there. Buddhism is right there. Meditation is right there. So people will say, how can I apply Buddhism? You don't need to, you don't need to see, you don't need to meet Buddhism right in the temple. Every corner everywhere of your daily activities. I can, I can learn, I can apply the teachings of the Buddha anywhere in my life. When I drive, when I cook, when I do many things. A few days ago, I attend a funeral of a lady who is only 50-something. A few friends attend the funeral, and I said, today we all come to attend the funeral and also to, you know, share the difficult time with the family and also to say goodbye to the late. So usually we go to the funeral, we attend the funeral just because one of the two reasons. Whether we know the, the late or whether we know their family member. Is that correct? We used to attend the funeral just because we say, Oh, I know his son, I know his daughter, I know his family, or I know him. That's good enough, that's good. But to me, one more thing we should come for. We come for the funeral because of the death, because of the family, and now because of us. 
Because of ourselves, that's why we are here. Why? Because every time when you attend a funeral, you have a chance to reflect the fragile of life. The coming, the departing suddenly of many people. Then what happened for us to learn now? Try to live good. Try to be there for our loved one as much as we can. Try to do something good as much as we can. So if one day anyone who departs, there's nothing to regret because we have done the best. I, we, I, I used to say, we do not ask for perfect, but at least we're happy because we have tried the best. I never expect anyone to be perfect, especially my students. But I like to see them try their best. If you try the best already, and that's all you can do, and that's much appreciate. What is that called? Meditation. Meditation means you're able to reflect on anything in this life. Let's say you come to the bus, you take the bus. Usually you have to be there. Sometimes you're just one minute or half minute late. You have to stand there for an hour to wait for another bus. Just half minute late. Why? Because you delay, you forgot something there inside. And that's why you're late. Life is like that. Sometimes we say, oh, I have plenty of time. But sometimes you have no time. Even half minute. So therefore, whenever we can see things, we can do things, let's do it. Do not retard. Do not be late. And this is how we learn and practice Buddhism. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your...